Ladies and gentlemen, give a solar kind of applause for Mr. Michael to my booth, which is right out here on backside of Goodly, next door to Danny Pessy, and I'm going to be giving you 20 hardcover books signed. If you brought your book, bring it. I'll sign it. 
If you didn't, come and buy a book. I'll sign it and we'll do that. So I want to let everybody know those first edition hardcovers are available, but we're making the transition to paperback. Uh, that is happening and it's happening right now. All right, so let's get this party started. The road, the road of solar. Why this road? Why are we on this road? Guys, every single generation has their moonshot. Our great grandparents had the Great Depression, World War I. Our parents and grandparents had World War II. They had a mission. It was a mission they had to get done and they had to get it done right. My generation has had to deal with several. The first one was the Cold War. President Kennedy said, we will have a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Man, there's nothing like a good, de like a good deadline. Let me tell you what. <laughs> You'll find out that my first seven-figure income had to, my first seven-figure year had to do with utilizing the endless number of deadlines that come in the solar world. We see, we think those are challenges, but really they're gifts. We will get to the moon by the end of the decade. Did we make it? June 1969, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Was that an accident that we got there at the end, right at the time for the deadline? Were we there for the moonshot Instagram picture? One small step, is that why we went? No. JFK said, we will do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We didn't have an electronic calculator yet. And he said, we're going to put a man on the moon. We said, you're out of your mind. You're crazy. That can't happen. We did it. Was that for that Instagram moment? No, it was to solve an existential threat. If the Russians got to the moon before we did, they would have the technologies for the intercontinentalistic ballistic missiles, and they would have the ability to deliver nuclear weapons to the United States from Russia, and we wouldn't. That was an existential threat. We solved that existential threat. My generation in my lifetime, we've had two things we had to get done and get done right. One was building the internet, and now as we walk into the current day, somehow we're tasked with saving the planet. Guys, I'm ready to tell you, this is our generation's mission. We have to get this done. We have to get this done right. This is the solution to an existential threat. We are facing in that moonshot when they had the lunar lander leave the spaceship and go down to the planet of, or the moon, they had to get it back. They said, don't screw the pooch. That lunar lander module was the pooch. It was the only thing they had. If they, they screwed it up, they couldn't get back. Our pooch that we can't screw up is planet Earth. And I'm here to tell you, this is our mission. This is our time. And what is that mission? Our mission is to take this energy source and sell and build a new strategy that's sustainable for 8 billion people that are on this planet. Why did we go away from collecting dead stuff of firewood and move on to digging stuff out of the ground like coal and gas and oil? Because there were too many people to sustain the energy needs by gathering firewood. So we started to dig into the earth. We're bringing this stuff up, we're lighting it on fire. That became our solution. We are ready to move on to the new solution and that solution is going to be the solution. Until they figure out that fusion thing, move it to earth, then we won't need to wait for <laughs> the fusion energy to get from the sun to the earth. But that's for another time. That'll be our kids and grandkids. That will be their task. Let me ask you a question. You've been on this solar road. Who here's made a million dollars in one year so far? We got one here, we got one there. Who else made a million dollars? We got one right here. I guess most of the people that have might have skipped this course, right? They already heard it. They know how to make a million dollars. But let's really talk about it. But has this road been this lucrative for you? Excuse me. Oh no. It's that way. We go. Bill Gates calls that the blue screen of death. That was a video of my friend Jimmy Esparza, who's lived both in the Mexico and in the United States. 
I guess you'd call him a first generation American. He's driving one of the most badass, actually in the video, I'm driving the most badass video, <laughs> the most badass Ferrari. I'm not a car guy, so I don't have a Ferrari. But I was driving his Ferrari that he earned because he has learned how to sell solar at a high level. He has a team, he has a company, and he's learned how to get to that point. Has it been that lucrative for you? Has it been as lucrative as you hope? Have you been able to create a seven-figure income that leads to an eight-figure net worth that will put you in a position to earn and create a nine-figure legacy? Will you be the first person in your family that starts foundations? that has their grandkids go to college because of the fortune that you were able to create during this gold rush. Are you going to take this moment and make that happen? Will you go from one comma to two commas? Are you gonna be a one comma person or a two comma person? As you reach for that, know this, I'm gonna share something with you. When you reach that level, that ceiling becomes a floor and then you're able to stand on top of that floor. Jordan Belfort thought of himself as a $10 million a year guy, so when they busted and sent him to prison, he wrote a book. Why? He had to make 10 million bucks a year. If you start thinking of yourself as somebody who actually makes that kind of money, you will start to believe it. You will see it, you will taste it, then you will achieve it, it will become real. Little secret though, you don't want to have three commas. That makes you a billionaire. And from what I can tell, being a billionaire is kind of a pain in the ass. You got to be, you got to start off as a genius. You got to get lucky, like a hundred coin flips in a row, lucky. And then you got to deal with the entire world up your butt about what you're going to do to give away that money. Bill Gates has a full-time job giving away that money. Warren Buffett's the smart guy. He's outsourced it all to Bill, right? Bill has to give away all of Warren Buffett's money plus his money and or can focus on getting richer. But what is the secret, guys? How are you gonna do it? And I'm gonna tell you, guys, the secret is to being in a race car, and you've heard me talk about a lot of things. I haven't talked about this. I've been happy to go on podcasts and say, how do you make a million dollars? I guess I'm just the Michael Jordan of solar. I'm just that good. Hey, you should buy my book. But here's the secret, and I can't help you with this. That race car goes 250 miles an hour effortlessly, easily. It wants to go 250 miles an hour. There's only one other guy in the entire solar industry that I know of personally that sold over 1,200 solar systems, 12, 13 million watts of solar closed personally at the kitchen table. That's my partner, Troy Debakowitz. And do you think it's some kind of crazy, weird coincidence? We like to think, yeah, Michael Jordan and Kobe were both on the same team. Guys, that ain't that way. He's a great salesman, I'm a great salesman. What are the odds that the two people were able to do that landed on one team? Those aren't odds. That's cause for a reason. We've been driving a 250 mile an hour race car. This bitch goes around the track that fast. Is that your story? That's what the money comes from. Figuring out how to be a seven-figure sales representative, you have to be the right driver, but you also have to be on the right road. You put that car on that road, and you're never gonna get it to above 70 miles an hour. That car goes 250, why is it on the wrong road? Guys, I spent 25 years, I learned about solar in 1984. I ran into the guys, that taught me how to close at an 80% closing ratio. They were 10 men. Everybody talks about Alec Baldwin and Glenn, Gary Glenn Ross. Write this note down. Watch the movie 10 Men with Danny DeVito and Richard Dreyfuss. That's the real, that's the stuff. Those are the guys knocking on doors, getting to the kitchen table, and then when they get to the kitchen table, they know one thing and one thing for sure. There ain't gonna be another meeting. I better close this thing right now because I ain't getting another shot at it. Those are the guys that taught me and I learned that in 1984 and somehow I had it in my head that if you were a legit guy, you wore a blue suit and you worked for IBM and you sold mainframe computers. So I got out of college 
and I got me a job selling IBM computers to Fortune 500 companies. That was a 25-year track I was on. And I maxed that baby out, I redlined it, I was awesome. Guess how much money I made? 150 to $250,000 a year, year after year after year after year. Why? That's as fast as that car goes. Why? Because there's MBAs in the back of that car figuring how to make sure the shareholders get the lion's share of the money. Guys, we have found a deal. We have found a road where we get the lion's share of the money. And I'm going to tell you, who here likes Chris Hart? Chris Hart made it to the, just movies, TV, top of the stand-up. And then he got invited to host the Oscars and he thinks, man, I think Kevin Hart, but I'm about to be Chris Rock. Man, I'm gonna be at that level of comedian. Then he gets canceled, some stupid tweet from years ago. He spends a year being mad, blowing up his marriage, blowing up his buddies with his, his real friends, his real buddies. And at the end of the year, someone had the guts to sit him down and look him in the eye and say, bro, you are Kevin Hart. Every comedian on the planet wants to be Kevin Hart. Don't F this up. Don't F up being Kevin Hart. And he wrote a documentary, let's write that down. Don't F this up, documentary Netflix. You're gonna learn about getting to the top, almost screwing it up, but then pulling it back. And that's what I wanna talk about today. For a long time, guys, I was on the wrong road. Hey guys, I lost the screen. <laughs> you guys have that screen, I have the right screen. So if you're in the back and you're doing AV, we've got the SolarCon fusion power up on the main screen and then I've got my slides and lost my notes. And the remote control doesn't work. There we go, <laughs> there we go. Can you get my notes back? There's my notes, awesome. All right, guys, I found out this car does not go 250 miles an hour. I was very, very blessed. Very, very blessed to have be intervened upon, get off of that road. But I tell you what, I, I knew how to do it. I had been taught, I had learned how to do it. But I tell you what, if I had stepped into this car, would that car have gone 250 miles an hour? Would that car have raced around the track at that speed? What you guys need to know, the bottom line is that closing a sale is the culmination of confidence and conviction and then transferring that to the customer at the moment of truth. There's no way in the world that you can relay all the information that you have to that customer. They have to trust you. They have to feel that confidence. They have to feel that trust. You have to know that if they go solar and ring your phone at 7.30 in the morning two years from now, you're not gonna be afraid to answer that call. And if you are afraid to answer that call, they're gonna know that when you're at their kitchen table. And I gotta tell you, this is on us. There is no EPC out there that wants to be a one-star review waiting to happen. Why are so many EPCs generating so many one-star reviews? What do you call a guy who works hard, generates 400 sits in a year, self-gen, 200 closes in a year, and delivers value after value after value? You call that guy a winner and you call him in the solar world a seven-figure sales representative. What do you call a guy, what do you call a deal where you go out and sell to consumers something that has very little or doubtful value for a lot of money very, very quickly. You call that a confidence scheme. And a person who works a confidence scheme is called a con man. And I have to tell you, I suffer not from imposters syndrome, I suffer from con man scheme, con man syndrome. When I sit with a customer and I show them the solar numbers and I show them how it works and I show them the vision, I show them the road, I show them their family being delivered from this cataclysmic threat of inflation and energy inflation and the world deciding we're not gonna burn shit anymore. And I show them the solution, I show them the numbers, they look at it almost every single time they say, 
this is too good to be true. And I think, well, maybe it is. The first year I sold solar, I didn't sell it to my mother because I wasn't sure it worked. I didn't sell it to my brother and sisters because I wasn't sure it worked. Every time a customer says yes to me and signs the document, I go into this thing, is this wheel, does this really work? And now I know. I've had 1,200 customers sign up for this. They call me at 7.30 in the morning all the time. And when I get that call at 7.30 in the morning and I'm just a little scared, oh no, maybe it quit working. Maybe it was an illusion. Maybe it didn't work. And I answer the phone and they go, hey, this is the so-and-so, so you sold us solar about two, three years ago. And my stomach goes, uh-huh. And they go, just gotta let you know, your guys are terrific. The company's amazing, this thing's doing everything you said it would. By the way, by the way, I had to tell you, I, I, I almost need to apologize. For a while I was saying bad things. I got a $230 bill in August. And I say, hey, yeah, this solar thing doesn't work. Told my neighbors, I don't know about this solar thing. I, had I called your office. They answered the phone in person. They transferred me to a, a lady named Kathy. And she said, well, let's get to the bottom of this. Let's figure this out. If you're being billed more than we told you, then there's a problem. Let's, let's get to the problem. If it's the system not producing, then we're going to have to fix the system. If you're using more power, then we'll know that's the deal. How much did we tell you? You were going to be billed by the utility. Well, let me look that up. Here's the proposal. Well, you guys said I'd get about $450 a year worth of billing from the local utility if I use the same amount of power. Well, Mr. Customer, it should be about that if you're using the same amount. So let's find out. And A, I found out I was using a lot more power, and you were right. Exactly what you told me was going to happen. And two, not only were you right, but I had $400 worth of billing. You, you under-promised and then over-delivered. This thing is working so good, but none of that. The reason I called you is I got a new neighbor. They just moved in. I said, you guys came from California where they had solar, and they're in Arizona, and I never gave you a referral for it because I didn't think about it, but they're asking me who did my solar. And I'm telling them, you did the solar, and you got to call these guys. They want your number. Here it is. Blah, 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 blah. My phone rings two or three times a week. Because I'm driving that car, I'm driving that mobile, I'm that driver, driving that car at 250 miles an hour. Are you that driver? Are you the franchise player? Guys, the grass is greener where you water it. Your question should be, what's under that hood? What engine is that thing running on? Not, hey, I heard you can make a billion dollars selling solar. I heard if you deliver value to real people over real time, that you can make a seven-figure business, not a hit-and-run year, a seven-figure business. How do I do that? Your question should be, what is that car like? What is that engine like? What is the delivery? And then start getting busy delivering a service. What is that service? And by the way, I gotta tell you, that World War I, World War II thing, our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, they were called to do a mission, but that mission required massive sacrifice, massive service. We're called to do this mission, drive that car, and how did we just get this blessed and this lucky that that's a seven-figure service, if we're doing it right? But what's the actual service? Number one, to propel your ass through space and time at a consistent level and a consistent basis to arrive on that customer's doorstep to actually be there in person to deliver the service how often are you doing that how are you getting yourself to that number of doors guys 400 sits 200 sales that's a million bucks do the math we can all do it are you doing it is the question and then when you get there, you've got your ass on their doorstep, and then your job and the most valuable service we do is intervene on ignorance. When we show this presentation at the end, they're going to say, oh my God, these, this is amazing. This is incredible. I didn't know. I thought it was all about uh, saving 38 bucks a month. Guys, are you knocking on doors going, you should go solar, it's cheaper? That's not a compelling reason to have a meeting. Save $38, $58, and I have some bad news for you. 
with new interest rates, new dealer fees, knocking on doors, you're not gonna be able to say, hey, it's necessarily cheaper. It may not be cheaper. What it is is a superior strategy that's going to deliver this family from peril of having their energy cost not just double in 15 years like it has every 15 years for 60 years, but because the United States of America has taken on this mission, they've decided and I got to be at a conference with my partner Val uh, at an SEIA. That's where the grown-ups in the solar world go to conferences. By the way, go check those out. They're talking about taxes and investments and bankings. We were in New York City with those guys. And we had a speaker from the Department of Energy who assured us that the government was dead set, dead set on reducing our carbon emissions by 47, 47% by the end of the decade in half, in seven years. Are you kidding me? SIA doesn't believe it, so they're using an estimate of 30% by the end of the decade. That's a massive, massive achievement. Are we up to it? Can we do this? Is it real? And she assured us that it is very real. They're gonna use the carrot and the stick. Mr. Homeowner, I have you down actually is not interested in solar. That's not why I'm here. I'm here because of the new law. Do you watch the news? Did you see the President of the United States sign the Inflation Reduction Act into law just a few months ago? It has $400 billion. Somebody asked me, was that an M or a B yesterday? Here at SolarCon, is that with an M or a B? That's with a B. $400 billion to give out to homeowners and businesses that convert from destructive fossil fuels over to green renewable energy, which in my state, Arizona, is solar, that $400 billion is gonna to go to families like yours, 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand. I don't know how much that is. I'm gonna leave here in a minute and go ask my engineers to figure that out. How much is your family giving? But the real reason I'm here is because you're required. This new law requires you to make a decision. You see, the bill not only has $400 billion in it, in incentives, it also has $400 billion in stick, in whip. And guys, the, the leading adopters are already solar, the smart people are coming, but the herd is gonna wait for the stick, and the stick is coming. The stick is the other $400 billion. That $400 billion is going to be paid by the people who don't go solar. The United States is going to tax, already is, started January 1st. Fossil fuels, coal mainly, natural gas, oil, gasoline, the taxes on that, the government's planning to drive us away from fossil fuels right into green energy, right into our arms. We are smack dab in the middle of where the hell we need to be, but it's our service to go and wake that customer up and let them know. And then to give a proposal, a presentation that lights the customer's ass on fire. Going solar because it's cheaper is not a thing. Going solar because it's a superior strategy. It's a wealth building opportunity. It's a way for you to avoid because if you don't go solar, and more people than possible can go solar in your neighborhood, which will happen, and the net metering goes away, and the tax credits go away, and then you find out, oh my God, my, my utility bill is telling me I need to go solar, not some guy at my door. If you wait till then, you're going to be dealing with profound regret. I'm here at your door to help you avert that. I, my job is to come back. I have to go, I have to leave. I'm so busy, I can't believe it. This bill has us guys in the solar industry just at full on red line. I've gotta go, but I can come back. And when I come back, I'll be able to show you those numbers. And I'll have all that work done for you. And you will be able to see, this is the next step that your family needs to take. And when you come back to that kitchen table, you will be equipped, you will be trained and understand how to communicate to that customer that it is imperative that they start this process today, not tomorrow. Now that we're good friends, I would love to come back, 
Now that we're friends, I see us having barbecues together. I feel like something's really started here. One thing I don't see is you and I being another meeting about solar. And yeah, I'd love to come back, but I can't come back. We're so busy, my job is this, the whole thing. If you get into my training, you'll learn the exact word tracks and how to do that. But you're going to convince them in a professional way that this is not the meeting about the meeting, this is the meeting. We're going to get something done productively and we're gonna start that process today. Why? Because you're driving that car. That's your job. That's your service. Understand what the money's for. If you heard that there's a lot of money in solar and you think you can skip in here and do all this stuff and make a whole bunch of money working 10, 20, 30 hours a month, not a week, and make a shitload of cash doing that and having no idea what the customer's actually getting, getting delivered, that's not a service. That's a con. Unless you know that you're delivering it and you understand that the money is for the work. Work equals force times distance. Distance is a product of velocity and time. Work, force applied over time creates results. We don't get paid for yeses. Everybody wants to be in five presentations a day that somebody else made happen. The meeting, made the meeting. And guys, I'm starting to call center, I get it. More and more of the world as we go through time is gonna be done over this, why? Because as utility bills go up, as inflation gets higher, we won't have to knock on their door. They'll come to that conclusion by looking at their utility bill. But do you think anyone's gonna pay somebody the money that we make? For sitting on our ass in an air-conditioned chair, walking somebody, walking somebody through a quote and signing them up? That deal don't pay that. I met somebody yesterday, that's their job, they're in four or five of these things, tell me about the volume and I get it. I'm, I have one of those call centers too, I get it. But guys, the people who are pushing the button on internet ads already woke up. They already know they need solar, half the job is done. And guess what, the guy I'm talking to yesterday, I said, well, how do you get these leads? What's your spend? He goes, I don't spend anything, they're free. What do you mean they're free? Yeah, it's just 50-50 with the lead company. They're doing more than half the work, they're getting more than half the money. You try to get to a seven figure income that way. And who are they talking to? They're talking to shoppers. And they're only talking to 3% of the population. 3% of the population is pushing buttons, saying I really want a sales, solar sales guy to call me, come to my house. The 97% of the population is thinking, I'm not going solar, why would I talk to a solar guy? That's the service, getting to that person's door, doing this work over time. And you can do it the hard way, which is on your own, with a lousy team, you're pushing this boulder up a hill, you got no resources, you are going to experience a negative amount of momentum. What does that mean? You let go of that boulder for one minute, it's gonna roll backwards on you and take you out, as opposed to doing it the effective way. Utilize your resources. Find people, have mentors. Find people who hold you accountable. One of the problems that we have and when I'm recruiting people and I tell people, good, the bad, and the ugly, the good is you can make a half a million dollars. You can make a million dollars. 20% of the people who work for my solar company, Sun Solar Solutions, make over a half a million dollars a year. Handful of them make a million dollars a year. Last year there were 26 Golden Door Award winners. Six of them worked for us. We know how to teach people to do that. Find somebody who can teach you and show you how to do it and help you become accountable. But when I'm recruiting these people, and I'm talking about Indeed people, right? I'm talking about baristas and car salesmen, they're not from the solar world. I tell them, there's a real downside here. And the downside here, in this business, you are your own boss. And most of us make a shitty boss. And you're gonna need to utilize your resources to create accountability. I use things like mini habits. I have a call that starts every single day, Monday through Friday, eight o'clock to 8.30. It's a mastermind on how do we go from zero to one every day. It's a human weakness that our momentum has to come to a stop every day. If you utilize those resources, find out how to do that, you'll generate the most valuable commodity in the sales world 
which is momentum. Momentum is what we're after. Momentum is what causes this to happen. Momentum is a product of mass times velocity, force applied over time. If two years from now you're starting over yet again on yet another blitz with yet another company that you don't have any idea what their installation trucks look like, you will have been in the process of starting over, starting over, starting over. You will not have the benefit of momentum. Momentum is how much something wants to keep moving effortlessly. Can you imagine if you started with that boulder at the top of the hill every day and you just had to give it a push? You just had to answer your phone at 7.30 in the morning. My phone rings at 7.30 in the morning three times a week with someone who says, your guys are pretty good and my neighbor needs solar, my mom needs solar, my brother needs solar. Every single person I sell solar to becomes a fountain of referrals. So you gotta utilize your resources. And they may, you wanna find great companies, great sales teams, but there's also other resources. Outside on that floor, you'll see SolarCon here is a way for you to get that training. There's all sorts of organizations. There's my training academy. There's Danny Pessy. Andy Elliott's through the scene. He's speaking tomorrow. Shut the fluff up if you want to figure out. You got to get your recruiting game on. You're trying to scale your business. Jay Kess founded the Solar Academy. There's massive value there. Shorten your time that you're going to take to learn how to do this. So this is our solar road, guys. But I have to tell you, the road ahead is not smooth sailing right now. We've been hearing all the high interest, high dealer fees. We're going from 0.99 to 5.99. No, no dealer fee loans have gone from 5.99 to like 9.99. That looks like a doubling. I don't know what this 8% inflation looks like. The government is trying to cause a forced recession. That's causing issues at banks. All of these things are happening all at the same time and they're affecting the consumer. We used to have an 80% sit rate. We knocked on your door, we'll be here tomorrow, 80% time, time, an appointment. That number's 50%. We had people no-show before, but you know what we didn't have is we didn't have people call us and say, don't come. <laughs> My husband got home, he's super mad, but I said yes to a solar appointment. Don't come, don't bring me the information, we don't wanna see it. We're scared that the world's ending. We're scared that this inflation is going to take us out. We're scared we're going to lose our jobs. We're starting to come out on the other side of that, I hope. But in the meantime, that means we're going to have to work a lot harder. I had Mo Fala, my friend, come and share with me, my whole team, about this road and how to be as successful with a way sharper turn road. How do we keep this thing going? And he said, it's different. It's changed. We're in a brand new game and you got to bring a brand new game to it. But guys, I got to tell you, that lady from the Department of Energy said there were three and a half million homes that currently had solar on them. There's 65 million homes in the United States that are suitable for solar. We've sold three million in the last seven years. We need to sell 30 million in the next seven years just to meet our commitments in the Paris Climate Accord and the United States of America, like a moonshot to the moon, is determined that it's gonna happen. Solar's not slowing down, it's going to 10x accelerate. But you're going to have to adjust with it. You're gonna have to come with it. And guys, I'm telling you, if we screw this deal up, I'm gonna be so pissed off I can't see straight. And we are the ones that are gonna make the difference. If we're running around from EPC to EPC because somebody's offering a nickel more, then you're the fucking problem. If you're showing up saying, what's under this hood? Is this gonna deliver value to the customer? Is this company gonna still be answering the phone in five or 10 years? Are they gonna pay me the money? Are they gonna be in business? My partner Val was assisting someone in the solar industry that's in a lawsuit. There's a settlement conference. The, the judge pro tem said to the party being sued, you're in the solar industry, you need to settle. Because if this comes before a judge or this comes before a jury, you're a dead man. People are not happy with the solar industry. You're gonna lose. 
you need to settle. Is that the story we want people telling us about our deal? There's like 13 attorney generals that are banded together. One company in particular got them super pissed off by selling them $70 a month solar systems and not telling them their bill is gonna be pretty much as high as it was before they started. They got thousands and thousands of complaints. And these attorney generals who personally barred these individuals from selling solar in those states are bound and determined to bring regulation. Yesterday was Platinum Day, and the whole day was talking about how we have regulations coming. Why? Because we're screwing this deal up. We should be asking the question, if there's 300 cents, 300, you know, $3 per watt in a solar deal to the customer, what's the right number of those cents go to the sales portion? But we've had a couple of gargantuan EPCs run around with a race to the bottom, trying to steal you away, marketing to you by throwing red lines around, and now everybody's asking about the sense. Guys, it's not about the sense. It's about how many commas are in your 1099, not this year, but three years from now. Is this a hit it and quit it deal? Is that what you want? I don't want that. I want guys to think solar, man, that's an industry that's really changing the needle, changing the, the needle on our future. We're delivering value. And yeah, we make a seven figure amount of money, but why? Because we're worth it. This is a seven figure service. That incentive in that $400 billion, you think they're incentivizing the homeowner? They're incentivizing us. But let's not forget, guys, pigs get fat, but hogs get slaughtered. We should be asking the question. When I was 10 years old, Pop said to me, son, it's a truly lucky man who knows what he wants to do in this world. Because that man will work a day in his life. But there are a few, precious few, and yeah, hell, I don't know if they're lucky or not. But there are a few people who find something they have to do. Some obsessed with them. Something they can't do, I'm about to stay out of your mind. I'm that guy. And I'm the one other man who is exactly the same. His name? Is it you? Do you feel that way? Do you believe you're on this road? Do you believe in that vehicle? And I'm not telling you you need to ditch the vehicle. I'm saying the grass is greener where you water it. You be the difference on that vehicle delivering that value, which maybe means I don't need 10, 12 grand for an hour and a half of my time. Maybe I need seven grand for an hour and a half of my time, but I want this thing to go. I want customers to get a remaining bill and says, that's what he told me. He said, I'd be spending about 400 bucks a year. There's 230 of it. But let me just tell you, if you're out there showing solar systems and you've clicked that option to hide the remaining bill that says they're gonna be spending 400 or 800 or $1,000 a year, California, net metering 3.0, solar may not be cheaper. And you're gonna to have to make a decision if you're gonna show the remaining bill or click the option to get rid of it. And then when they say, well, how much will I be billed if I add these 27 solar panels? And if your answer is, oh, you know, two bucks for the grid fee and seven dollars for this, it'll be a few bucks, don't worry about it, nothing to see here. You're gonna to need to change your cell phone number in about a year. I've had the same cell phone number since 1989. I have thousands of customers. My company has put this on 10,000 roofs and we're not afraid of the phone answering because we're a team. And are you enough is the question. And I submit maybe you're not enough. Guys, that's winning. That's how you win. When you have a brand, every single person on that team is wearing that yellow Ferrari brand. That's a brand you can stand behind. That's a brand you can win with. That's a brand that you'd be happy to put a solar system on your mother's house, on your brother's house, on your best friend's house. You're like, let me show you this team. These guys know how to get it done. And somehow, and I don't know how, but I got to be that guy that gets to drive this son of a bitch. And I don't know how, those all guys have different pay scales, but because I get myself into 400 appointments and sell 200 solar systems a year, I don't even want you to know this, but I make a million dollars a year and God damn it, I'm worth it. Those are the guys that get the money. All right, I 
got 47 seconds, I'm gonna do this quick, guys. I, I gotta tell on myself on my MOD call, which I do every day, we have tell on yourself Tuesdays, hold yourself accountable, reach out and get some help. I have to tell you, I've been talking about generational wealth for a long time. Yeah, anyone know who this guy is? That's Teddy Roosevelt, Bull Moose, President of the United States. I've been talking about generational wealth and I honestly, I really didn't know why. That's Jesse up in the front with his two kids. Jesse's had a hard road, but he makes great money in solar. Those two guys sitting next to him are gonna have opportunities Jesse never even imagined. They need to go to MIT to get the next thing done that saves the planet on the next go around. He's gonna have the resources to do that. But he didn't really cause that to happen. This guy did. Cornelius Van Schack Roosevelt, they called him CVS, not the drugstore. He sold hardware. He was a merchant, owned a hardware business, imported. New York City was about importing. And he imported hardware. And then his kids got the idea, man, you know what? This, this, this building construction business in America is gonna take off. We're gonna get into the plate glass business. They became the guys to see. We're putting glass on the roof. These guys started building buildings out of glass and they were supplying that glass. And after a couple of generations, they had built a fortune. That was a gold rush. And that fortune made it so that this guy's son was able to give his five sons each their own brownstone flat in New York City. And those guys didn't have to go to work in the family business because the family business was so successful they could do other things. Theodore Roosevelt's father started children's hospitals. He started the New York Metropolitan Opera. He started the New York Natural Museum of History. He changed the city that he lived in because he didn't have to work at the sweat of his brow to pay the rent. He owned a million dollar home in New York City given to him from a fortune, started from a generation before. And then Teddy is born and Teddy comes about with these values, knowing that he's been granted an opportunity that nobody else gets. And he goes on to be police commissioner. He goes on to be the mayor of New York City. He goes on to be a congressman, a senator, and president of the United States. As president of the United States, with the stroke of a pen, that man had the vision and the power to create Yellowstone as a national park and a preserve for our children's children. Grand Canyon, Yosemite, there's a whole system of national parks. Guys, those aren't valuable, they're priceless. All done by a man who didn't have to work for a living. That is the difference. That is the definition. That is the opportunity that comes with generational wealth. Are you gonna take this opportunity to build your fortune so that you're the one in your family that people talk about that started foundations? where their grandkids' kids went to schools and did whatever they needed to do because the, the, the resources were there. Generational wealth was created. That's why, not so we could be on Instagram flashing a Lambo, because we want to be the person in our family that makes a difference and makes this happen. And if that's what you're looking for, then I will look forward to seeing you in the winner's circle. Have a great solar con. Look forward to meeting each one of you. See you soon. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen.